Hi everyone, welcome back to another week with STEM Power. This week we are learning about sound. The fun fact of the week is that sound travels at 767 miles per hour. When you go faster than this speed, you break the sound barrier and create a huge sonic boom. This is what it sounds like when you pass that speed. We will learn about sound in two ways, through a sound and string activity and through a popsicle stick harmonica. The first activity we will be doing is a sound and string activity. Before we start, let's learn a little bit about sound and how sound works. Sound travels in what is called a sound wave. Sound waves don't go up and down like you think. They're actually more like if you push one end of a slinky, the sound moves like this horizontally through the air or medium, whichever thing it's traveling through. This kind of wave is called a longitudinal wave. When there's a vibration, it causes other particles in the medium um, which are things like air or water where tra sound travels through, it causes particles in the air that I'm speaking into to vibrate and then they keep vibrating until they hit an obstacle or somebody's ears. We can hear different types of sound because there's a different volume and a different pitch. Volume is like when I shout, ah, or if I whisper like this. Volume is measured from the middle of the wave up to the highest point. You can see here that um, I've shown it on a diagram and this is actually called the amplitude. The higher the amplitude means that there's a higher volume. A higher volume basically means that it's just a louder sound. Also if I have a high volume wave which results in a higher amplitude that also means that that sound wave has higher energy. Pitch is measured by how high or low the sound is. So for example, a high pitch ah, would be like that and it would be measured by a short distance between the crest of each wave or a short wavelength. You can see here that a wavelength is measured from crest to crest or trough to trough, which basically means the highest points or between the lowest points. So a short wavelength is a high sound, ah, and a long wavelength is a lower sound, like ah. One way that we can visualize this concept is with a guitar. You can see here that the thickest string is here and the thinnest string is here. When you pluck the thickest string, it is hard for the string to vibrate, so the vibration will move more slowly. Slower vibrations mean that the frequency of the note or the sound is lower, which causes a lower sound. You can see in this diagram that this pitch has a long wavelength and a low frequency. If I pluck the thinnest string, it is so easy for the string to move that it can vibrate very fast, which means that the sound has a high frequency, a short wavelength, which means it will be a higher pitched sound. For this activity, you will need pencils, a long piece of yarn, one per student, a small metal spoon, and a big metal spoon. First, make a hypothesis. Guess what spoon will make the louder sound when you bang on it? We will then gather into groups of two. Take your string and make sure that the ends are even when you tie it around the big spoon. You want to make sure that the two ends that are left are approximately the same size. Here you can see that I've tied it into a bow, but I would advise that you just tie it once and don't do a bow because this will be dangling from the strings only and you don't want the knot to untie. Now, pick a person to be the listener. This person will be the listener for the long string on both spoons and the short string on both spoons. You will switch after they have listened four times. Bunch both ends of the yarn and place them in your ears. It is important that you don't touch the spoon with your hand. The only thing that should be touching the spoon is the string, and it should be dangling in air. 
Your partner will come with a pencil and gently tap the spoon while it's hanging in midair. The listener should be able to hear something. The listener should record this down on the handout. Now repeat the same thing on the smaller spoon. Tie your long string that you just used on the big spoon right under the head of the small spoon. And listen, record your observations. Repeat those steps on the big and small spoon again, but with shorter string. You can take both ends of the string and just cut them a little shorter. After the listener has listened on both spoons with both long and short string, the partners should switch. When you switch, use new string. After both of you are done, summarize. Fill out the last box on the handout. Discuss. Would a plastic spoon or a metal spoon make a louder sound? Why? A metal spoon will make a louder sound or a larger vibration because it is more dense than a plastic spoon. Let's reflect on how sound works. Sound works by bouncing off particles in a medium or a substance. A metal spoon has more particles than a plastic spoon of the same size. Because of this, when you put a vibration onto the spoon, it can travel a lot faster and more efficiently through the spoon as opposed to a plastic one. Because sound dies out as it moves, if it's able to move fast and efficiently, then the sound will last longer and it will be louder in the metal spoon. So since it moves weaker, weaker and not as fast in the plastic spoon, then it does not make a loud sound. Discuss. How does sound travel on the string? Sound requires some kind of medium or something to travel through. Think about when you travel. If you want to go from one country to another, you need to either go in boat, car, or plane. You need something to travel in. Similarly to this, sound needs something to travel in. We arrive fastest from country to country by plane. And in a similar way, sound travels the fastest through solid because there are more particles for it to travel through fast and efficiently. So the sound was able to travel fastly through the yarn to your ears so you could hear the sound very clearly. Whereas if you just banged the spoon and held it at a distance, you couldn't really hear the sound. For our second activity, we will be making a popsicle stick harmonica. For this activity, each of you should get two popsicle sticks, a pencil. I'm using a pen so you can see better. Two rubber bands, a toothpick, scissors, and a piece of paper. I'm using a scrap piece of paper. Start by cutting out a piece of paper that is roughly the same size as your popsicle stick. Feel free to trace the popsicle stick onto the page and then cut it out. This is what it should look like. Next, cut your toothpick so it's the width of your popsicle stick. You can do this by cutting it in half first and then trimming it down. You should end up with two toothpick segments that are roughly the width of your popsicle stick. It should either be the same width or a little bit wider like mine. Now set the toothpicks aside while we work on constructing the harmonica. You want to sandwich the paper strip in between the two popsicle sticks, like so. This is what your sandwich should look like, a popsicle stick, paper, and then popsicle stick. Take one of your rubber bands and tie a rubber band around one end until it is snug. Now that I have done this, I'm going to sandwich a toothpick into my harmonica. You can do this by opening it and I'm going to put one toothpick 
under the paper first. So I'm sliding it. You can see there's my paper. I'm sliding it under the paper. And then pulling it towards the rubber band end. I'm going to pull it until it is super snug. So as close to the rubber band as you can get it, like this. We're going to repeat the same thing on the other side, but when I put my toothpick in on the other side, I'm going to put it on top of the paper instead of under. Now I'm going to slide my toothpick in. Again, I'm sliding it on top of the paper. I like to do it by going in the middle first and then pushing it out. Your harmonica is ready to play. Simply blow or suck in air to make a unique noise with your mouth on the popsicle stick. Before you do this, you want to make sure it's clean. So you can either have washed the popsicle sticks before or you can wipe it down and let it dry. When you blow in your harmonica, it's important to blow like this. Tuck your lips inward and then lightly blow on it. You can try blowing with different air pressures, so try blowing really hard or really soft. And to make different sounds, you can pinch it a little bit, a lot, or try to make it have a wider gap. Have fun! Discuss. What is a wind instrument? Do you know the two different types of wind instruments? And how do they make sound? Some examples of wind instruments include flutes, trombones, trumpets, and saxophones. There are normally two types of wind instruments, a brass instrument or a woodwind. And a brass instrument makes no sound through the vibration of the musician's lips. So for trumpet and trombones and tubas, they have a mouthpiece that they attach to the instrument. And with their lips, the musicians go they do this thing called buzzing and those vibrations can carry through the instrument and when they press the different keys it'll make different notes for wind instruments or woodwind instruments there's normally a reed so clarinet is a single reed you it's this is the mouthpiece and the reed attaches to the back for double reed instruments there are two reeds and those are normally for bassoons and oboes when you blow on the reed, the, the reed vibrates back and forth, which creates vibrations that carry through the instrument and make sound. Woodwind instruments can make sound by blowing air over an open hole against the edge, like a recorder, or blowing air over the edge of an open hole, like a flute. Discuss. How are different types of sound produced in different wind instruments? Reeds or strings inside wind instruments are responsible for producing these different pitches. Earlier, we did a demonstration with guitar strings. The same concept applies here. However, when we have shorter strings, it vibrates more easily, so it produces a higher pitch, whereas longer strings in the instrument will produce a lower pitch. When the string is shorter, it vibrates more easily, and it creates waves of higher frequency or with shorter wavelengths. When this reaches our ears, our eardrum vibrates at a higher frequency, which causes us to perceive it as a higher note. This is what my harmonica sounds like. And then if I pinch them together a little bit, it makes a higher pitch. And if I pinch it together more, it makes a higher pitch. That's all for today. Discuss. What did you learn today? What do you still have questions about? Thank you.